welcome back to Movie Review Mom. And if you're new here, yay, you found my channel. I'm so glad. Take the minute and subscribe right now because you're going to love this channel. <laughs> and click on that little bell notification and it'll notify you every time I upload a new movie review or trailer reaction. Okay, so the movie I'm reviewing today is called The Batman. This very dramatic and dark superhero movie is available exclusively in theaters. It's rated PG-13 and is two hours and 56 minutes. This is a long movie, almost three hours. And in fact, it's the longest Batman movie ever. So I'm gonna give you an overview in a nutshell and then I'll point out things I liked and didn't like. I'll offer tips for parents, themes worth talking about. Uh, recommendations for other movies, interesting lines, and I'll top it all off with recommendations for other films that I think you'll really like if you like this one. Okay, let's dive in. In a nutshell, Warner Brothers presents a very new and different kind of Batman. The story is about Batman, not as an origin story, but just as a character that actually already exists. Batman ventures into Gotham City's underworld when a sadistic killer leaves behind a trail of cryptic clues. As the evidence begins to lead closer to home and the scale of the perpetrator's plans becomes clear, he must forge new relationships, unmask the culprit, and bring justice to the abuse of power and corruption that has long plagued the metropolis. Cue the Riddler. So here are some of the things that I really liked about the movie. First of all, Robert Pattinson. He first caught the world's attention in the Twilight movie franchise. I kind of thought he was just a pretty boy actor, but he stunned me with his powerful performance in the movie The Lighthouse. And I knew that we had an actor who wasn't just blooming, but who could one day win an Academy Award. He's that good. Batman has very large shoes to fill, and Robert Pattinson is more than capable. This is the very first time that we see Bruce Wayne's black eye makeup after he removes his mask, and there's an incredible sadness and pain to his performance that successfully helps him to come to terms with his role that he has selected as the Batman in Gotham City. Robert Pattinson seems to have gotten his low grovelly voice from Christian Bale as Batman, but director and writer Matt Reeves actually based this darker version of the popular superhero after Kurt Cobain, who had achieved wealth and fame, but preferred being a recluse. That's the Batman that we get in this gritty psychological thriller. Rumor has it that Matt Reeves was listening to Nirvana while he was writing the first act of this movie. Out of the many actors to play Batman, who do you think does it the best? Comment down below. This film has the same dark, brooding feeling that the movie The Dark Knight evoked, but I think it's even darker. The talented cast also includes the beautiful and sexy Zoe Kravitz, the incredible chameleon Andy Serkis, Jeffrey Wright, Colin Farrell, Paul Dano, John Turturro, Peter Sarsgaard, and Barry Keegan. And speaking of Colin Farrell, wow, I never would have guessed that it was him in this role. Nicely done. The Penguin doesn't look or sound at all like Colin Farrell. And I don't know that that was a spoiler or not. Colin Farrell is the Penguin. Kudos to the makeup team that did his prosthetics and fat suit. He's just seriously unrecognizable and really great. My only question is, why didn't they just find an actor that already looked like that? Just wondering, Colin was great. <laughs> Fun fact, Zoe Kravitz actually voices the character of Catman in the Lego Batman movie in 2017. And if you haven't seen that version of Batman, you absolutely need to, it's hilarious. There are many elements of this movie that qualify it, in my opinion, as horror. For example, the Batmobile feels like a scary animal attacking its prey. Matt Reeves also based his version of the Riddler on the horrific Zodiac Killer from the 1960s. There are also horrifying, spooky, creepy images that are just spooky and creepy. <laughs> 
there's a lot of terrific tension and suspense throughout the entire film. Whether you wanted another superhero movie or not, this is definitely a solid addition to the Batman filmography. There are some riddles and reveals that keep things interesting. And people who love looking at clues and crime scenes will be intrigued. There's also a very creepy soundtrack and a very dark shaded color palette, I think, that really evokes the feeling of horror and terror and creepiness. Now, I know volumes have been written about Batman and Batman movies for decades. And so these are just my opinions, of course, but I try to give you the heads up so that you, you know what to expect. So here's the list of things that I didn't really like about the movie or thought could have been just done a little bit differently. First of all, everyone speaks so quietly. So when this film goes to streaming and video on demand, I highly recommend putting on the captions so that you can hear what people are actually saying. <laughs> the movie felt more like a detective movie, if even a film noir almost, than a real superhero movie. And so some Batman fans may not enjoy this spin on the classic superhero flick. Some people may just say, oh, it's brilliant. And many people are. There are a lot of minor plot stories or sub stories that kind of get a little messy and disappear, reappear. Um, anyway, uh, when my four sons were really young, they loved watching the older Batman movies because there was lots of action, cool tech, and zany villains. And so I'm not convinced that they would have liked this one because simply it's too dark and creepy for young kids. For adults, I think they're really going to enjoy this. I am really glad that I got to see this movie finally because I was curious how Robert Pattinson would fare in this legendary role. But it's probably not a film that I'm going to watch again. It's simply too long, three hours of my life. And now I know the answer to the mystery of the bat, the cat, and the rat. Cha-ching! <laughs> There just isn't any scene that I'm dying to see again. Now, I've actually heard film critics say the opposite, that they can't wait to watch it again. For me personally, once was enough. Now, let me give you some tips for parents. There is a lot of violence, murder, dead bodies, and you see them all. Torture, blood, you see a shirtless man. Quite a few characters are just complete psychos. And that's why I said, this is very much a psychological thriller. There are a lot of characters who are going through psychological, emotional issues. <laughs> Some of the themes that are illustrated in the movie well are fear, power, crime, greed, making a difference, sacrificing for others, legacy and family, and emotional scars, and what it takes to heal and find life's purpose. So I always write down funny lines and interesting lines, and I include them on my written review at moviereviewmom.com. Uh, and I'll share a few of them with you right now. I didn't write down any funny lines. There is some very subtle humor, nothing laugh out loud for sure, which is very different from the very beginnings of the Batman movies that we saw on TV in the 60s or whenever that was, right? And then of course, this story and this character has evolved to become quite dark in recent years. Anyway, some of the interesting lines are spoken by Robert Pattinson. For example, he says, they think I'm hiding in the shadows. I am the shadows. One thing I really loved about the movie was how Batman shows that he's a very smart guy. He's not just some superhero with magical powers and he flies through the sky, and does everything, you know, without thinking. He has to really think about these riddles and come up with the answers. And oftentimes he is able to provide the answers to people who desperately need the answers. Or otherwise their head's going to blow up and stuff like that. <laughs> and so I thought that this was an interesting one. Somebody asks, what does a liar do when he's dead? And Batman thinks for a minute and says, he lies still. And I thought that was so clever. <laughs> And then finally, uh, Robert Pattinson says, vengeance won't change the past. And I love that because he describes himself as vengeance. 
and being the shadow, right? And he's looking for some sense of closure with some vengeance. He's looking at other people who are looking for closure through vengeance. And ultimately he's able to decide what's happened in the past is over and that his life purpose is to move forward. Now that's not a big spoiler, but I think it's a huge point that is definitely worth having a conversation with when you watch this movie with other friends or family. So overall, I thought the movie was very well executed, a little bit long with a few things that I would have tweaked, but ultimately it was a very good, solid Batman movie. My overall movie review mom grade is an A minus. So, all right, so that's it for my review. My recommendations are simply to watch The Dark Knight again to compare and contrast this Batman with that Batman. And then of course, watch all of the other Batmans as well, just to kind of watch that evolution, like I said, of the character and of the many actors who have played this iconic role. Thank you so much for subscribing and watching and liking my channel. All of those things really help to grow my channel and I appreciate your support. Have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.